earlier this week, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, they released a survey on transgenderism and gender identity confusion among American high school students. Now, the data was co collected by the CDC's Youth Risk Behavior uh, Surveillance System. They, they surveyed some 20,000 high school students from both private and public schools. As the legacy uh, media was quick to point out, the 2023 survey was the first to ask teenagers in all schools whether they identified as transgender. But what can we draw from the survey's results how were they presented? I think it's a very important question. And here now to unpack some of this for us is Meg Kilgannon. She's FRC's Senior Fellow for Education Studies. Meg, welcome back to Washington Watch. We're honored to have you. It's great to be here, Jody. All right, here we go again. Our tax dollars at work. <laughs> Can I put it that way? Uh, well, what, what, what did this CDC study find? Well, you know, this survey gets on the wrong side of me right quick because we have a, a version of this survey. And I wonder actually if this survey data collection is just a function of the sex, drugs and rock and roll survey, the parents used to call it in Fairfax County and other counties all across the country. Um, they, they, they ask kids questions that would make anybody blush on these surveys and they do it in cooperation with the local health department. Um, so that they can, you know, basically spend more taxpayers' money. And so in this version, so nationally, they have asked the question for the first time in 2023 if children are identifying as transgender, but they've been asking that question in my county and many other counties across the country for 10 years or so. Uh, wow. So they asked that question on this survey, or they or they gathered this data from the national survey. Now it's it's um, I suppose mandated or standard language or best practice to to ask that question now in, in everyone who participates in the in the the survey, which again is most counties because they link it to the health department so that they can justify spending money to um, you know raise awareness about sexual minorities and, and STDs and all kinds of things um, are for children. So they they found that 3.3% uh, 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 of, of students in this 20,000 student sample are identifying as transgender. Um, they are self-identifying as, as that. They're, they're answering the survey question to that effect. Uh, what do you think about this assertion? Uh, that, that sounds like really high numbers. To me, I mean, I'll just, I'll just say well, that. Is this I mean, as a as a parent and as a former teenager, I tend to take these surveys with a grain of salt. <laughs> I mean, they're okay. you're, you're giving kids a survey at school and you're asking them all kinds of leading questions. I mean, the questions on these surveys, Jody, are really, you know, it's how many times did you you know, smoke meth in the last three months? Or, you know, did you, have you had sex uh, once, twice, or 12 times this month? I mean, the, the questions are really outrageous. So um, I don't hold this survey in high regard at all, but I am an extremely biased person in this regard because I've really been annoyed by this survey for many years that they would, that they would ask children these questions as if the children are in charge of the decisions to be made in the school system, it is still up to parents and those we give our authority to, 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 to guide children and to, to lead them in the way they should go. And asking these kinds of questions on a survey at school, I think does, does not do that. So look, th these questions are, are shocking to hear. Uh, point one. Point two, uh, there's no doubt this generation is being bombarded with all kinds of uh, voices leading them astray uh, into all sorts of sexual behavior and now transgenderism and all this. In, are, are you still saying, though, in, in light of all of that, that you question these numbers? I do. I do question these numbers. I think in some places it's very fashionable to identify as something that is not heterosexual or the 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 sex you're born. 
And um, I think it's a way to get attention. I think it's a way to get out of class. I think that ch- that vulnerable children are being led to th- ask leading questions and led to these conclusions by by staff who are not qualified or trained to do so. Uh, and I have I have grave concerns about this information. And I think that it is that this is the kind of thing that comes out in the last year of a presidential administration because the ideologues who've been laboring in, in at the CDC have one last shot to get out the final um, misinformation that they can possibly get out as regards this this topic. And they know that across the country, legislatures are passing all kinds of laws to to restrict their efforts to indoctrinate children in this way and to protect children from interventions and surgery, mutilating surgeries, from cross-sex hormones, they're protecting women's sports. And so so this is this is the CDC's way of of trying to to um to to, t- to have a win on their side for the the the, the need for us all to to uh, support the idea that boys and girls could be born in the wrong body, which we know is a terrible lie. It's not possible. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, why, why does the CDC believe this this group is suffering? Is it true? Let me put it this way. Is it true that this group, if even if so-called affirmed, like is what we're being right. told we must do to this group because they're so emotionally fragile and so forth, even if they are affirmed, does that help them? Do their problems go away uh, with with affirmation, with people saying, okay, you're really a girl or you're really a boy or whatever the case may be? Well, that's really always been the crux of this problem is that to be to be transgender requires something of literally everyone else in the world besides just you saying it's true. It requires everyone else to go along with your delusion that you were born in the wrong body and that you were not the sex you were born. Um, and and that I, I can't imagine that that leads someone on a path to mental health. I think that children are very vulnerable. I think that that um, social media and and access to cell phones and screen time for kids is is something that is terribly detrimental to their mental health and it is certainly a delivery mechanism for information that is untrue ungodly unhealthy and so is it any wonder that children are experiencing more mental illness is it any wonder that they're confused about their identity when we were conducting this experiment in real time in allowing children access to these devices um that that are untested for their age group, known to be addictive and proven to cause them mental distress. So I think that they are vulnerable. All children are vulnerable, right? And if you're at the point where you believe that you were born in the wrong body, obviously there is a deep seated longing for something inside you. We know that that is longing for for God and for love, uh, obviously, right? But that answer cannot be given in the setting where these questions are being asked, because we have removed God from the public school system. And with him went love, frankly. And so um, we, we, we have a lot to pray about in this regard. And it is really important for people of faith to, to vote in elections and to keep voting down the ballot. I mean, um, those down ballot races for your state legislature and your school board and your health department, all of those things are very important. They really affect so many people that you live with in your community and who you love. So we really need to, to be paying attention to what's going on and vote. vote. Absolutely. Well, you know, and while you were talking, Meg, you, you did a, a great job unpacking that for us. And, you know, I, I was just thinking while you were talking, it is true that when there is the absence of God, when uh, truth, biblical truth is kicked out, sin enters and sin brings with it blindness. It, it It is illogical. It makes no sense. And it just turns people into all sorts of behaviors that, that are, are destructive. But with that, let, let me ask you, does this apparent gender confusion that seems to be more, more and more prevalent among young people today, does it persist all the way into adulthood? 
Now, the, the, the few actually good academic studies we have on this topic all show that children who are not affirmed and who are allowed simply to go through their normal puberty and, and to, to have therapy to deal with whatever the anxiety, the comorbidity it is that's causing them to feel this way, most of them desist from this idea that they were born in the wrong body and they come to accept themselves. And um, this would be a much healthier outcome than, than the idea that you have to affirm these kids with, um, with hormones and surgery, make a lifelong medical patient of children, essentially through their adulthood when you affirm these ideas. So no, you, th there, there is hope for a way out. And we have lots of resources at FRC that, that can help with that. Absolutely. And I want to give you I want to give you the opportunity to, to get where people can get some of those resources here in just a moment. But I, I mentioned a while ago, I typically have the worldview segment here uh, to close the week. Uh, and David Clawson is here and I always love to end on some good news. So now I'm going to say to you, Meg, tag, you're it. OK, so I'm going to I want to switch gears here uh, and end on on a good good note if we can. So tell us about a recent win uh, for the parents in a Pennsylvania court after uh, school was accused of teaching first graders about transgender ideology. Yeah, this was a really this was a really uh, good news story this week. Um, a court in Pennsylvania, uh, some parents whose children in first grade on Transgender Day of Visibility, um, these children were read two stories two stories about what it, what it is to be transgender, um, how, how you could and and the teacher explained that. Um, Sometimes parents are mistaken about what what body their children are born in and what their sex is, and sometimes doctors are mistaken. and And this obviously caused a lot of stress among some of those students who went home and asked their parents all kinds of questions. And the parents were shocked. They were like, "Why are you talking to my first grader about this? What's going on?" And um, since they were not satisfied with the answers that the school gave, nor were they guaranteed that their children would not be presented with this kind of information in the future, they sued the school district. And the judge came back with a tremendous ruling that just completely affirms parental rights. And um, it, it was a great win for, for these parents, for for biological reality, for for the the truth of God's design for humanity. I mean, it was just it was really just a spectacular decision, and so uh, I'm curious to see now if the school system will appeal. I'm I know they're going to be under tremendous pressure from the the um, LGBT community to appeal this decision, and so it would be great for for those listening to pray for for the school system that they will have the courage to stand up for. The, the rights of these children to not be indoctrinated with, with sexual identity politics while they're in school, especially when they're in first grade, but really never when you're in school should be, you be indoctrinated with this kind of stuff. And, um, and again, it really makes a difference who's on your school board. It really, you really need to know, you need to meet with and understand who, who are your children's teachers um, what what kind of books are in the classroom on the shelf for your child to peruse when they're finished with their work? What is going on in your school? As a parent, you have a right to know. You have a duty to find that out because That's... they may the school may be in the wrong, but it's still your responsibility as the parent to, to, to raise your children. Great information. A great, great, great victory. Thank you for sharing about that. All right, real quickly before we go off the air for this week, uh, some resources that FRC has that you think may be helpful. Well, I think those voter guides that Matt was talking about earlier are great at frcaction.org. And then we also have at frc.org uh, lots of resources on how to talk to people about gender. And so we'd encourage you to to just check out our website and just, you know, search around on it and find the things that you need. Thank you, Matt Kilgannon.